Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Philadelphia. Thank you. My name is John Mertick. I'm here, the director of the Open Mainframe Project, and I want to welcome you all to the first in-person Open Mainframe Summit. We had a great idea two, uh, three years ago to do an event to bring the whole community together. Uh, it was going to be in New York. It was going to be at Marist. We were really, really excited. Then we had this whole pandemic thing get in the way of things. Um, but we've been excited that the community has stayed strong through the virtual events we've done. And uh, we're just excited we can finally get together here. And we also not only have everybody in the room, but we have a ton of people that are watching us virtually from around the globe. And so we're really excited to bring together um, such a great audience here. Now, as you all know, events are really made possible by a lot of different things as attendees like you coming. Um, you know, we have a lot of leadership and investment from the Open Mainframe Project just to bring this community together. We do this as a service to all of you to have an opportunity to meet, to connect, to network, and we really keep encouraging you to do that. But we also have some amazing sponsors that have stepped up as well. Um, and I really want to thank our platinum sponsors, Broadcom Mainframe Software, IBM Kindrel, and SUSE. Let's give them a quick round of applause. They are amazing stewards of the platform. In addition, we have a number of great gold sponsors, BMC, CloudFrame, MicroFocus, and Viacom Infinity. Let's give them a round of applause. Now, they have booths set up in our sponsor showcase, which is over in the green hub over in that direction. They'll be around the entire event, including tonight. We have a nice uh, sponsor showcase kind of crawl where you can go meet everyone. Go talk to them. Go meet them. Um, they're really interested in what's going on in this community. They're making a ton of great investments, um, and they would love to tell you more about it. So definitely go check that out. In addition, we've got a couple good talks today. Um, and we've got a really nice lineup of keynoters um, that are really going to talk to you about some really interesting things this morning, from diversity to security, um, modernization, the whole nine yards. And, I really want to take at this moment an opportunity to thank our program committee because, and if there's members, stand up if you were a part of that program committee. I think who's we just have, yep, we got a couple of folks. They had an incredibly hard job of picking these talks because we had a record number of talks come in and what was supposed to be, I think, a 30 minute meeting turned into about two hours um, because it was that hard to go through and pick these great talks because there were just so many amazing ones. So let's give them a round of applause for helping put together a great program. We also have a really cool special event today, uh, our diversity luncheon. We have a number of great speakers here. Uh, you know, Kelly from Broadcom, Cynthia um, Coop, uh, Shar Owens Schwartz from Rocket Software, and Bryron Smith from M&T Bank. Um, the diversity luncheon will be, I believe, in this room, if I'm not mistaken. Sullivan Hub, this is Sullivan Hub, excellent. Um, so we invite you to come, learn from them, um, you know, learn about their experiences, chat with them, um, and just, you know, just sort of understand sort of where, you know, the diversity and, you know, just where the future is going um, through all of these great people and the experiences that they've had. Um, a couple of other housekeeping notes that I want to remind everyone on before we get into here. Um, a reminder that we do have an event, Code of Conduct. Um, we want to make sure everyone feels very welcome and included um, and just treating everyone with respect and professionalism. If you do run into any concerns, um, our LF staff at the registration desk, you can contact them and they can be of assistance. In addition to just being welcoming, we also want to keep everyone safe. Um, so we do ask that you do use your masks throughout the event here, um, unless you're actively eating or drinking. Um, you know, we have a, people from all over the globe here, and we want to make sure everyone doesn't walk home with COVID, and we want to make sure everyone's safe. So um, we do ask that you do that. Um, the Wi-Fi information is on a link on the back of your badge. So if you look on the back, you can see that information there. You can connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, and like I said, our uh, sponsor showcases in the green gallery, which is out that way. Um, and it opens right after this here, and it's open throughout the event and then um, to tonight as well. Um, so that's the big things there. And like I said, we have our sponsor group booth crawl, which starts right at five, right after the last sessions. 
So it gives you an opportunity to have food, drinks, and you can kind of mingle and, and network and whatnot. So when the program committee was spending this 30 minutes that turned into two hours, um, one of the big conversations that I, you know, and I was sitting there as kind of a fly on the wall. I don't like to get involved in picking any of this. Um, I, want, I want the smart people in the room doing it, anybody but me. Um, a lot of where the discussion they had was, what is the themes? Like, if somebody comes to an event like this, what do we want them to walk away with learning? You know, what do we want them to experience? You know, because that's so much is what a good, strong event is about. It's, you know, the experience that you learn, you know, the experience of meeting people, the experience of being exposed to new ideas, the experience of networking and coming away with ideas and coming away with new, you know, opportunities on projects or working groups or other sorts of initiatives. So when we were all talking and when that group was talking, I remember really three distinct things that really stuck out to me. The first was around security, which we all know security is a hot button topic in technology as a whole. It certainly is an open source, and it's been a mainstay of mainframe for probably going on six decades now. Um, and what we are seeing here is open source is continually being more and more adopted on this platform. You know, it started 20, 20, 25 years ago with Linux coming to the platform. And it's grown over time. And in the last you know, five or six years, we've started to see the growth of open source on ZOS. And I, I have a very firm belief on security that every piece of software we use is insecure. We just haven't figured it out yet. We haven't figured out what the vulnerability is yet. And there's two ways you combat this. One is, you know, proactively, you put the right processes in place. You put the right tools in place. You put all of those things so you know, you're, you're able to get ahead of it, but you can't get ahead of all of it. And so the second most important part is how you react to it. And the reaction part is something we all have to be a part of. Everybody as a whole is part of the security story here. Everyone as a whole here is a part of making our software more secure. And, you know, we at the Open Mainframe Project you know, we partner with folks because we can't even solve all these problems. And there's a lot of great institutions that we work with, not only the great vendors that bring their security practices, but cross groups like the Open Source Security Foundation uh, that is focused on just building out best practices and tooling around security around open source. Um, tooling like SPDX, which is focused on building out a secure supply chain for your software so you know where it's coming from and you can easily scan and find the vulnerabilities that are in existence, the dependencies you have. And guidance that all of our projects go through of the Open, source, the open SSF Best Practices Badging Program, which is a way that all projects can go through and assess, are you following the best practices in open source? Because if you are, those security issues you're gonna be able to attack them. You're gonna be able to be ahead of the game. You're gonna be able to react to them well. And for all of you who are customers in the room or users of this technology, projects with that logo are the ones that you can trust because you know that they're taking all of this seriously. And I would encourage you, if you go to tac.openmainframeproject.org, um, that's our TAC website and they maintain a lot of the processes and documentations and tools and they talk about our project lifecycle which really goes into the rigor that we put all of our projects through to make sure that they can be successful. Now we have a great lineup of security talks here today, um, both today and tomorrow, um, and we've invited David Wheeler, um, who's our uh, director of open source supply chain here at the Linux Foundation to keynote um, here this morning. And I would encourage you to check this out, but I think more importantly, I would encourage this as an opportunity to do a conversation. You know, see the people in those rooms because they care about security meet them, talk to them. Um, you know, I, I would even love to see out of here these, you know, folks that attend these talks get together and say, you know what, let's do something together around security on the mainframe. Uh, so use this as an opportunity here to build that networking. So theme one, security. Theme two, we're seeing our ecosystem evolve from the people. We're seeing new people coming into this platform from new different ages, different backgrounds, uh, different genders, all over the place. Uh, you know, if you listen to our I Am A Mainframe podcast, it's, it's one of the, the coolest things I love about it is 
on one uh, topic, it's Ross Morey, and the other, it's a student that just graduated. And you just get to see the spectrum of people that are involved in this ecosystem. Now, I truly believe that when you have a diverse ecosystem and a diverse group of people, you get greater outcomes. You get different perspectives. You get higher engagement. Uh, and it works better for all of us. And we at this project and the Open Mainframe Project and just the Linux Foundation more broadly, we are big on championing this through all of our efforts. You know, we have our diversity lunch today. We have a number of great talks in this space here. And everything that we do, we keep an eye on how do we make sure we're championing diversity, equality, inclusion in everything we do and make sure that our communities are ones that reflect that. Now, this is a very important topic. And I'm going to put a pin in it for now because I'm going to talk about tomorrow um, during our opening remarks a little bit more and talk about things of our mentorship program and whatnot. Um, but know that there's a lot of great talks here today. We have a keynote here later today. We have one tomorrow as well. Um, and we'll sort of dig more into that topic then. And the third thing that we've seen emerge is mainframe part of enterprise IT. And a trend that I saw probably about a decade ago was forward-thinking enterprises look at sort of the hybrid infrastructure that they have built over time, you know, whether that has been intentional or by happen chance of acquisitions or different business units and things like that. They don't look at it as, the forward-thinking enterprises don't think of it as the cost of doing business. They think of it as a competitive advantage. Because their thoughts are, if I want to be just as good as my competitors, I just go buy something off the shelf because they could go do the same thing. But my ability to build an IT and application infrastructure that uniquely is able to service my customers, to enable them to go to market faster, to be able to operate more efficiently as an organization is a competitive advantage. It's a whole different mindset that you see sort of happening at that level. And how does mainframe fit into this? Well, those enterprises also see mainframe as a part of that story. They see that plugging in directly there as well, and they see that as a key part of their IT strategy. And we see that reflected in the work that's starting to happen within this community. And what we have seen is sort of the, the poster child around this has been Zoe, which has really shaken up the landscape to begin to think about this. It's broken down the walls between enterprise IT and ZOS. And Zoe's turned four this year. Um, it's actually is just barely turned four here um, as of a couple weeks ago. And what's really interesting is that project continues to mature as a community. They continue to evolve. They continue to bring new people into it. Um, and we continue to see new leadership sort of step up there and that built. But as that maturity has happened, customers have noticed, and now they're seeing that and beginning to adopt it too. And, you know, I mean, we were looking at uh, the Accardi mainframe adoption um, service, I know which is one that many of you, um, you know, check out. And one of the things that I took away from reading that from the 2022 report, one is we have 19% of mainframe customers have adopted Zoe, which is almost double from a percentage of the year before. But more importantly, half of the customers they talk to are looking to implement Zoe, which is five times what it was a year before. So they are seeing that as well. They're seeing that trend. They're seeing this is where we're looking and we're wanting to invest. Why are they seeing that? Well, number one, because of the maturity that's happening to the project, but two, the maturity that is happening in the vendor ecosystem below it. And that's what we see as a healthy sign of a, a really big open source project. And if you look at a project like Kubernetes, for example, you know, the strength that they began to have is not only through the strong community come together, but the vendor ecosystem that develops beneath it that is able to help really support and drive the use cases and drive the investments back into the project. Um, and Zoe is no different. We have 70 Zoe conformant offerings from six different vendors, which is a fabulous number. Uh, and it's great, great to see. So we're seeing Zoe's maturity and the work that's happening in that community as the thing that is bringing open source into the collective conscience of all of your mainframe customers. 
The second part is what we're starting to see is in the COBOL space as well. And if you remember, the COBOL focus really happened because of you know, some silly governor in the state across the river here um, that was blaming COBOL on all of his problems. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go, there you go. COBOL, that's right, yeah, it, it wasn't the language, it was a color. Um, <laughs> So as you, know, as you all remember, response to that is quickly we started to focus here. A, pro a programming course came together. We saw a project start to form around unit testing in COBOL. And this working group really came together as a way to like, let's collect sort of the thought leadership. Let's collect the ideas of where things are going. And they've done a number of great things. They've done talks at conferences. They've really started to get the word out. And one thing that they're looking to do is they want to build some true research around COBOL because there's not a lot out there. And they see a really opportunity to help give customers, give users, give everyone in enterprise a true view of what COBOL is out all about. So we're excited to announce that that working group is partnering with LF Research, which is um, a part of the Linux Foundation is focused on building amazing research. We have um, some great leaders within that group, along with our training and certification team, to put together a research paper around COBOL and the enterprise usage and the ecosystem around it. Um, the goal is, is when to kick this research off after the first of the year, and when we all get together next time, a year from now, we'll be able to report on all of the findings to it. Uh, there's great opportunities if your organization sees this valuable to get involved. Um, we have a blog post that's going to be going up on the Open Mainframe Project blog, blog later today, where you can check that out and, and learn how to become a part of that and become a sponsor of some of that work. The other thing that we're starting to see is this conversation around what does modernization mean? And it's funny because I've heard so many times this conversation around modernization and mainframe modernization being some sort of code word for something bad. Um, but the reality is it's not. It's, you know, if we go back to sort of the earlier theme there that enterprises see their IT infrastructure as a competitive advantage, Modernizing is a part of that, and that's not meaning one platform preferred or ripped over another, it's what can each platform do uniquely for my business to make me execute and help me execute better. So we have pulled together um, with the leadership here, um, you know, folks like, folks like Misty Decker and others have pulled together a group that's gonna start to explore this space and drive consensus and bring everyone to the table Everyone from the mainframe vendors to cloud vendors to folks that have different opinions on you know, what modernization means and get them together under one roof and one um, group here to drive some consensus, drive some research, drive some thought leadership. Uh, there's a blog post going up around this. You can learn a little bit more about it and you can also learn if you're interested in taking part of it. This is a working group that's open to anyone. We've had a number of our member companies listed up here, Broadcom, IBM, Model 9, Rocket, uh, SUSE and Viacom Infinity just stepped up and said, hey, we're supportive and we want to be a part of this. And you're going to see them heavily investing in it. But it's a group open to all. This is a topic that's interesting to you. Go check out the blog. Sign up for the mailing list. Get involved in the Slack. It's, you're, you're at the ground floor of this, which is great. Um, and it's, it's an amazing thing that we're starting to see together. And you know, as I talk to folks, they also say, this is a unique thing because this is probably like one of the only places you could do something like this, of bring these people together to collaborate on this sort of level. And I think the third thing that we have started to see is on the Linux distribution front. And as I said, Linux has been on this platform for almost 25 years now. It's been an amazing sort of run. And Linux is itself, you know, go back another decade or so before that. And one of the challenges is I've often talked to people in the Linux space, and especially with sort of non-x86 architectures, is it, you know, being able to collaborate on you know, what the difference is with this architecture between distros has been a real challenge. And you know, we saw this initially with some of the Debian projects, and then we saw other Linux distributions step up and say, hey, boy, if we could work together to make sure that the patches that we're putting into this code, um, the up, we're all getting them upstream together, we're all kind of working together on this, because a stronger ecosystem of Linux support on this platform means great for everyone, not just you know, for the folks here, the, the logos you see there, but for every customer that's wanting to adopt this. They're not having to pull their own patches from multiple vendors. They're able to see this collective expertise come together. 
So this has been a group here. This is actually not a new one. It's been going on um, you know, for quite some time here. Um, but what we have seen probably over the last several months is a stronger set of Linux distributions coming together. And you can see them listed up on the screen there, um, including sort of two new Linux distributions that are supporting the S390X platform in Alma Linux and Rocky Linux um, that just added support for S390X this summer. So uh, we'll have a blog post on this. You can learn more about this working group, how to take part, how to get involved. Uh, it's really, really exciting stuff. And the validation for all of this work comes down to customer and user adoption. And our projects, that's what our validation is. You know, we're, when we're building something, we're not, you know, our project communities aren't just building it for the fun of it. They're building it because there's real life usage for, this, for these projects and for this code. And we're really excited. Um, Rune Christensen of Bank Data did a great interview with uh, Swap Nil of, of the Fourth Industrial Revolution here, where he talks about how these projects are centered to his organization. You know, projects like Cobalt Check, the Cobalt Programming Course, Polycephaly, Zoe, all of those are part of their development cycle. All of their staff goes through the Cobalt Programming Course training. All of their uh, deployment is using Zoe. Um, they're doing unit testing with Cobalt Check. It's fascinating. Definitely go check out that, because this here is where you can see how these technologies are validated through use. Um, so definitely go check that out. And you know, all of you together, you know, use this as an opportunity to network and find more ideas like this. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to make this event kind of a fun one. You probably saw out there we got a bunch of games and things going on. So you know, go find someone you've never met before that seems interesting and say, let's play a game of Jenga and talk about mainframes. Um, you know, let's, let's get some checkers going and let's talk about open source security. I really, really encourage you all to use this as kind of this unique opportunity here to get everyone together. Um, and I really thank you all for definitely coming. Oh, shoot, I forgot. I got one more thing. So if there is one thing that I have heard, I've been with this project for seven years now. Um, and the project's seven years old, so I was here you know, from the very early days. Um, and it's been an amazing, I, I love this community. But if there's one thing I have constantly heard from every single person in this community is, where is the mainframe we can use to test this open source? And my, <laughs> and sometimes we're able to kind of answer it, it's a little bit of big bar and steel, sometimes less stealing, because you can't really steal a mainframe. Um, but it's, you know, we've, we've had some folks that have stepped up in different areas, but I've never had a universal answer to that. And that has just been a struggle of mine personally, because I just look at this community and I'm like, I want to give that to you. I want to make sure we can get that to you, but how can we do it? Well, I got some good news for you. We got a mainframe. <laughs> and that is actually is our mainframe packed in a very unique IBM-approved box, wrapped in IBM-approved cellophane, um, transported using an IBM-approved carrier. Um, I'm just saying that for warranty purposes. Uh, <laughs> but it's through the generosity of two great organizations. One is Broadcom, who donated this hardware and tape storage and uh, disk storage to us. And let's give them a round of applause, because this is amazing what they have done. And secondly is Marist College, who has always been super supportive of this ecosystem, that this is where this hardware gets to live and they're gonna have it in their data center. So thank you, Marist. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, I will say, while I would have liked to say our mainframe is on right now, it is currently looking just like that, wrapped in a box, um, in cellophane, you know, ready for appropriate IBM maintenance to come on. Um, we're gonna be working on getting that up and running here in 2023. Um, and the goal of it is, it's not only is this gonna be supportive for all of our projects here that have needed infrastructure, but as we talk with our governing board and our technical advisory council, they want this to be a resource for any single open source project out here that wants to test on a mainframe, they can use this. So more to come on this, but we are super excited that we actually finally have a mainframe. 
<laughs> yes, yes, this is like, the, like the, the, the pinnacle moment for all of us here. So thank you all here. We got a great lineup of speakers um, this morning here. And I want to start off with our first keynote speaker.